to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course on connectors and adapters. I'm James Messer. I'll be your host in this module where we're going to learn about the information we need to know to pass test 220-601. Section 11 says that we need to identify the names, purposes, and characteristics of ports and cables. So we're going to talk about a lot of different types of connectors today. The D sub miniature, the Centronics, and the networking. We're also going to talk about cable adapters and how those are used to change gender, look at null modem, and couplers. So let's start with connectors and how we would see these D sub miniature. We often refer to these as the D connectors. These DB connectors is what we really refer to them because they're shaped like a D. You can see I've got some specifications here of the DA, the DB, the DC, the DD, and the DE. Now the shape like a D, which is where the D comes from, not a lot of people know that second letter is really referring to the size of the connection. This was created by a company called ITT Cannon. So we have referred to the most common one that everybody knows about is the DB25. It was one of the first types of DB connectors that was used. And so when later versions came out that were different sizes, we ended up calling it a DB connection. So that DB25 was parallel. We called DB9 the serial connector, which was what we often see. It's really a DE9. That's the E size of the D connector. Nobody calls it a DE9. It even sounds funny, except that's exactly what it is. And the DB9 is there, and it's a serial connection. So you'll hear the DB term always used, even though it's not really DB. A little bit of trivia for you, but that second the uh, number that's there is really referring to how many pins are on that particular D sub miniature connection. Not really sub miniature anymore. We often don't see these. The, we've replaced almost everything with USB because USB is much smaller these days than what used to be called this sub miniature type connection. Here's another connector. This is the Centronics connector. And it's worth mentioning the Centronics because it, it's been used on printers for years and years. But it is a funny looking thing. It's got this weird connector on it. It's got these latches that attach to it. It's really a very unusual type of connection. And it was Wang Laboratories that first came up with this. And what they were doing is they had all of these calculator connectors sitting around that were, were in surplus. They couldn't do anything with them. They thought, what could we do with these 20,000 weird connectors we've got sitting around? I know. We'll use them as printer connections. And that's what they did. And they very quickly became a very standardized type of connection for printers. So whenever you see this Centronics 36, it's really talking about a printer connection. There's different sizes of Centronics connectors, just as there's different sizes of DB connectors. The Centronics connector for 50, for instance, is very often used in older SCSI equipment. If you're wondering what SCSI is, that small computer systems interface, that's referring back to an interface type. If you go back and look at one of our storage videos, we tell you all about SCSI. So you'll sometimes see Centronics on some of those SCSI devices as well. For networking, there's a whole different set of connectors for networking. And you'll see in a very, very old systems. You don't see them much anymore, but there's still a few sitting around out there in some of the older environments, something called BNC, which is this thin net Ethernet, very used very early on for Ethernet connections. It's coaxial. It used these funny barrel type connectors there. In fact, you had to end the cable on both ends, had to have this terminator so that the signal didn't bounce all over the place. And the computer actually plugged into this little T shape that came off the side of it. Very hard to work with. Uh, it's very difficult to run and relatively expensive to get it inside of a place. So we don't use much BNC anymore. Another type of cable connection we don't see a lot of anymore is, if you can believe it, one that was even thicker and harder to work with was for token ring networks used in a lot of environments very early on in networking. And this is called an IBM Type 1 universal data connection. And what was nice about this connection it was it was really solid. You can see this is, a, I couldn't even find a real one of these. I can only find a picture. You don't see them much anymore. But you could flip this around and the two ends would connect to each other. And they'd really stay there. You had to really push on them to get them apart again. So it was nice having that universal data connection. It worked really well for token ring. But it was big, it was bulky, and the cables were really, really thick. So these days, you very often see this RJ45 connection and this very small modern copper cabling, this twisted pair wiring that we use. And that works very well for speeds up to 1 gig these days. So it's a very common scenario. You see it in people's houses now in their home networks. And it's used in every major network data center around the world today. 
Now that we've looked at different cable types, let's look to see how you could adapt those different cables from one, one way to another. What if you had a cable that ended in a male connection, but you really needed it to be female or vice versa? Well, there's these great little connectors called gender changers, and you plug them onto the end of the cable, and now you've got a way that you can adapt these cables to these different pin types. For instance, this happens to have male on one side and male on the other side. So this will adapt a female connection to be a male connection. This happened to be with a 25 pin connection, but there's gender changers for almost every type of pin connector you'll have out there. So you don't have to replace the cable or cut the end off of it and put a new end on. Just stick this little adapter on the end and suddenly you've changed the gender of the end of that cable. I mentioned in an earlier module that if you have a serial cable that you're using for a modem, it won't work as a null modem connection because you have to twist the pins. Well, instead of having a new wire in place or having to cut the end of that cable off and rewire it, you can use these little null modem adapters which means you can use the same modem cable that you've always used. You unplug the end of it, you stick this little adapter on it, and now it works just like a null modem cable was. Now, this is great if you're using null modem cables a lot and modem cables because you only have to carry one cable around with you and then you have this tiny little adapter that go along with you. So if you ever see any of those, that's what they're for. So you can easily convert a modem connection, modem cable, into a null modem cable. Very handy to have if you work with that type of equipment. And finally, for networking, if you're someone who uses a lot of network connections and you travel a lot, you'll have one of these in your bag. The, these are called couplers, and they're, they're able to extend the wiring connection that you might have in an RJ45 connection or an RJ11 connection. So if you're running that cable across the floor to your phone and you just don't have enough cable, instead of pulling that cable out and replacing it with a longer version, you can put this coupler in place and put another cable onto the end just to extend it on along the line. Now there is a little bit of data loss, a little signal loss when you do that, but if you're running a very short connection, maybe in the same room, very handy to have this so you don't have to buy a new cable. You can simply extend the cable that you already have. In review, we've looked at all kinds of different connectors, the D sub miniature connectors that these days we just call them DB connectors, the funny looking Centronics, and finally some that we use for networking. We also looked at some adapters we can use, not only to change the gender, but also convert cables from a modem to a null modem, and finally to extend the length of some of the cables that we use for both our voice and our data connections in our environment. If you have questions on this video, you'd like to comment or watch any of the free videos that we happen to have, you can visit our website, freeaplus.com.